Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Rosmo. And thank you for everyone's sweet words. I'm feeling much better and managed to work on this video as soon as possible. With that being said, welcome to another episode of Ever Heard Of. And for today's video, I watched Claws. You know, that one Netflix movie that was advertised a lot and then never heard of again? Yeah, that was my experience. I <laughs> I forgot about this movie. Spoiler warning because I'll be diving deep into this movie today. Okay, so Claws is a 2009 Christmas movie which was the directorial debut of Sergio Pablos and was animated by this animation studio named Sergio Pablos Animation Studio. Yep, so the man made his own animation studio. And don't be fooled guys, this movie looks like 3D but it's actually 2D animation and we'll talk about that later. So as always, splitting this review into three parts story along with the recap of the movie, animation, and the characters. So Claw starts up with some sort of training camp or academy for postmen and we get introduced to this pretentious guy who already gave off the privilege aura. Go ahead and cancel the drill sergeant's espresso actually. And uh, here, why don't you finish mine? I'm not going to be needing it anymore. And I'm going to take one last look around the old place so I can forget it. My first thoughts of seeing him was, wow, it's like he's Cusco. He even sort of sounds like him. You know what I mean? We meet his dad where he says that his son, the main character who is named Jesper, failed every single class, which he purposely did so that he can go back to his comfy, rich life. But dear old dad couldn't let him just let his life waste away, so he told him that he will be a postman and he will do his work in... Smirensburg. Look, the scene was so good cinematography wise and it was so tense, but I kinda couldn't take it seriously. Because what the frick is Smirensburg? I was so focused in expecting something like the North Pole or the Tundra, I don't know, but Smirensburg. Which I have never heard of. Luckily, the guy who seemingly hates Jesper said this Sir, I'm all for discipline, but Smirensburg? Isn't that a bit excessive? So it kind of made me understand that Smirensburg, mm, uh-uh, it's a scary no-no place. He has to deliver 6,000 letters or else he will be disowned. Not really good parenting on this guy's end, but, uh, you know, he's gone as soon as he's introduced, so let's forget about him. Anyway, Jesper goes to Smirensburg, gets jerked around by the sailor, and we see how much of a violent cesspool Smirensburg is. They even have this bell to signal when they can fight. Like, hell, without even the bell, they'd be ruining each other's lives on a day basis. While running away from the bloodthirsty villagers, he sneaks into this school that's full of fish and meets Alba. There he sees a picture of this woman and realizes that she graduated and took up a teaching job and well we got this really cool scene of Alba's frustrations about having to be a teacher in Smearensburg. What happened? What happened was that's that came out I wrong. I took a teaching job at a place where people don't send their kids to school. I'm mingling with their sworn enemy spawn. Oh no we can't have that. So now, I'm reduced to doing this so I can get some money and start fresh somewhere far, far away from here. Are you going to buy something? Herring's on sale today. And that scene in itself made me bestow Alva the best girl title. Well, well technically she's the only one that can have that title. Because I mean, it's either her or the old hag and I'm not even going to continue with that comparison. Anyway, Jesper tries to do his job and there are no letters. Nobody likes each other, thus no letters to send to anyone. Plus, Smearensburg is a place cut off from the rest of the world. So, you know, Jesper has it tough. There was even a scene where a kid dropped his drawing and he told the kid that he can't give it back until he pays postage which I know he's manipulating a kid but this guy's gotta do what a guy's gotta do you know it didn't work out for him though don't worry getting desperate Jesper visits a house far from the town hoping there's letters to be delivered from there the big guy named Claus finds the drawing Jesper stole from that little boy and decides to give the boy a toy with the help of Jesper and with that Jesper's postal business starts with kids wanting to send letters to Claus because they think they're gonna get toys and we get this absolutely hilarious scene of Jesper going around town like a damn drug dealer asking if they want toys. This is my favorite scene, hands down. It's great. He goes to Claus, manages to convince him. Well, Jesper didn't convince him it was the wind and some sort of magical lightning. I'm not even joking right now. There's magic. There's some magical voodoo, da-da, whatever business is on this, baby. I don't know. Let's not 
think about it too much. All the while that's happening, the kids are starting to get along, which the town leaders do not want at all, and they indoctrinate the kids to be violent and hate the other side. Soon enough, more kids heard about the news that sending a letter will get you a toy, so they swarm Jesper's house, where we meet this adorable little nugget here, but they can't understand her, so... Bye. Don't worry, she's definitely not gonna come back as a major plot point. Uh-uh, no. Jesper then finds out that some of the kids can't write or read, and he had this brilliant idea of sending them to Alba, which at first Alba hates because she's been saving up so that she can leave the place, but she begrudgingly gives it a shot. I mean, she ignored them to work on her fish business, but then this happened. Yes, yay, it's your name. Wow. Can you teach me more? Please. Me next. I want to write my name. Me too. I want to write my name. Me. Me too. I want to write my name. I want to write my name. Me too. I want to write my name. And this is the part where I usually say kids aren't like that. This seems a bit forced. But I've taught young kids, like little toddler baby kids. And let me tell you, they are eager to learn. And when they do, it's the best feeling. It really energizes you when kids are interested in learning what you teach. And I felt that little surprise that Alba was feeling. And then that night while delivering presents, Jesper delivers a gift to this house of the kid that called him a loser way back when. So you know what he did? He didn't give him a toy, even though he gave a letter and postage and he gave that little twerp coal which you know i know it's petty i just love the reason behind the coal thing in this movie it's just because it just for his being petty i love it the kid confronts him and they have this really intense scene that was said to be inspired from that one scene in breaking bad so since jesper started this thing where mr claus has a naughty list and sees everything you know the drill every kid starts helping others and do good and that created a domino effect with the adults as well and and slowly but surely, the town was taking a turn for the better. Alva spent all of her savings building up for the school and buying materials for her students. The townspeople are more friendlier and not trying to kill each other, and Jesper's postal work is booming. But then, the town leaders hate that, so they try to sabotage Jesper and Claus, which they fail to do, and this silly event caused the rumor of Mr. Claus having flying magical reindeer. All the credit to Jesper's wacky imagination, of course. While all that's happening, the Crumbs and the Ellingbow are joining together in peace to prevent peace. So, yeah, don't mind them that much, they're just idiots. While that was happening, the two are running out of toys, so Jesper made this workstation for big guy Claus, and Claus was not having it. So he was kicked out, and now Jesper is down in the dumps. He talks to this little girl who speaks Sammy, and I don't know how they're talking to each other right now, but maybe it's just Jesper assuming what Sammy is asking him all of these things, but... You know, he, at the end of the day, he brings her to Alva. They write a letter so Sammy could also get a gift, and since Claus is at a commission right now, Jesper tries to make the gifts, and soon enough, the two make up, okay? They make up, of course they do. And they make a sled for Sammy, and Sammy loved it. I think that's her name. Insert the correction if there is. If none, then... Great. And it is revealed that he stopped making toys because he and his wife were not blessed with a child. Or children, they wanted five, I think. And while they were hoping for one, they kept making toys, but none came until the wife just died of an illness. And then he visits Alva to see how much the old rotting fish warehouse turned into an actual school. And Alva's not leaving Smearinsburg anymore, since things have changed for the better because of what Jesper started. And then Sammy's people helped build the toys for Christmas, and while they were out making the toys, the town's leader found Jesper's letter meter and contacted his father so that they could go home. And that all led to this revelation to Claus and the others and yeah, we're really having this stupid misunderstanding cliche, huh? Which I'll talk about later in detail, but for now, Jesper leaves, but he doesn't actually. And now the townspeople are gonna destroy the toys for the kids because they're assholes. And then they succeed, but oh, it's actually a decoy. And the toys are safe and Claus and Jesper are besties again. And at the end, I think Claus died, I guess, I think think? I say it this way because he just went into the woods and disappeared. I assumed he died, but I'm just curious where his corpse is. Am I the only one wanting to see that? I mean, I don't want to see it, but you know what? Never mind. They have this magic in the world. Let's just leave it at that. And at the end, they see how all of the people live their lives. And I love how Jesper's dialogue ended the movie like this. What I do know that once a year, I get to see my friend. 
Okay, finally we can talk about the story. Now all in all, I like the concept of the origins of Santa Claus and the stories about him like the reindeers, which is actually just them going too fast and making it look like it's flying. It's really, really a smart concept. The story does go pretty slow. I had times where I wondered, is is this going somewhere? But with all their dragging buildup, the payoff is worth it. The ending was also very nice. Somehow the ending was bittersweet, but it was sad to see Jesper search for his friend and wait for him in hopes to see him. And the music highlights that loss of a friend. And then the bell rings, and it somewhat took a brighter tone before it all fades to black. The movie as a whole is good, but there are times where I felt like the story was going slow, but all in all, I liked it. If I were to point out one thing that I didn't like, it would have to be the misunderstanding cliche. We've seen it done a hundred a thousand times now where there's a big revelation all the people get angry and that one person in the wrong kept repeating i can explain listen to me wait you don't understand and like if, if you have time to say all that repeatedly then just start explaining you know what i mean if the person would start explaining immediately and then get cut off by the angry people then yeah i'd like that more than just him repeating that he can explain which happened in claws as well please i can explain klaus just listen i Everybody's out to get some. And one more thing, I don't understand how they're angry. So what if Jesper's leaving? Why are they angry at him? Because he had some ul ulterior motive? My gosh, even if he did, that doesn't change the fact that the town has changed for the better. They're adults, right? Why are they acting like children? Wait a second, okay? But with Claus, it took some time for me to realize, but he was actually mad because he believed that Jesper was doing a true act of goodwill or whatever without any ulterior motives. But I don't think that point got across enough because he just said that phrase a few times at random and i guess that's why he's angry again this is just how i perceived it when i first watched it it truly irritated me that i had to stop and then pick it up again where they tell jesper that they planned a fake out all along look all i'm saying is it being a cliche isn't bad but it's bad because of how it was handled okay other than that it was a good and fun movie let's move on to the animation where i don't know if you know this this right here i know i said it but it's all 2d baby it's all 2d it only looks 3D because the animators put so much effort into the lighting. They wanted to stay the 2D art style, all the while keeping the storybook picture look so they created a software wherein it can detect where the light should be. But as they said it's not perfect so they have to manually fix it all the time and add the finer details. It sounds rigorous because it is, but the end result was worth it. It turned out absolutely beautiful. They succeeded in bringing 2D and a storybook kind of picture together in its own way. It it's astonishing. The music was good as well. I didn't take note much on the music or that one forgettable song that was played during the movie, but I did notice one scene where Jesper was looking around Claus's workshop. You see, at some point I was getting bored, but then Jesper entered that dark, cramped, scary place, and I knew this was gonna be where Santa Claus appears and whatever, but I haven't seen the, their version of Santa Claus yet, so I didn't know how he was gonna enter the scene, and the Christmas music really intrigued me. It was a really, really cool scene, honestly. The music was a big help in gluing my eyes in these few seconds. Now let's move on to the characters. Let's start with Jesper. Look, I hate to make this comparison, but I feel like I need to address this again. Yes, Jesper is really similar to Cusco, but the more I look into their characters, the more I see their differences. Other than being spoiled and privileged, that's it. I feel like in terms of sassiness, Jesper doesn't have much of that. Because if you've seen Cusco, Jesper seems like a shriveled up fruit. But anyway, my point is that they're similar, but I can tell that they weren't taking inspiration from him or that they had intention of copying him. No, they're very, very different. Also, I thought that they got Cusco's voice actor because it sounds very similar. But then I looked it up and it was actually Jason Schwartzman. Remember him? That one voice from Fantastic Mr. Fox review? I freaking love his voice acting. And I was thrilled thrilled to know that he was the one voicing Jesper. He did a great job. Now about Jesper himself. See, he's a funny guy. Yeah, I love this bits of sassiness and I really appreciate it when Jesper notices the kid talking about Claus and getting all the credit, but he didn't make it a big deal other than this one line. What happened? Not a word. You just sit there. Be all magical and awesome. At first his slight tactics were just embarrassing, but he was desperate so I can understand that. But when he knew he was cashing in, brother, he went all out and he rode that train. He's got street smarts, this guy, I can appreciate that. Next is Claus. Now I enjoyed him being this mysterious figure that doesn't really talk much, but silently gives kids gifts so that they can be happy. But then he started talking and I didn't recognize his voice at first, but I looked it up and it was actually J.K. Simmons. You know that guy who played J.J. J. 
Jameson, Omni-Man, that frightening guy from Whiplash. Yeah, that guy. Seeing him play a very chill old guy that gives presents to kids, it's refreshing to say the least. I don't really have much to say. Claus's backstory was really sad, but it's been done multiple times now. But it is a good tie into Santa Claus's story because we've heard multiple stories of Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus, but never heard of Santa Claus's children, you know? Finally, I'll be talking about Alva. Now, Alva played a minor role here, more on being a plot device to teach the children how to read, and I don't mean the word plot device is a bad thing. Even as a side character, Alva got major character development, from a rotting fish salesman who just can't wait to leave this forsaken town, to a teacher who's obviously passionate with her craft. Her relationship with Jesper, though, didn't really feel any romantic vibes as much, but I don't think they had much time to delve into that since they gotta focus on Claus and the children. It's a Christmas adventure movie, not a romance movie, so it's all good. Okay, finally, we're at today's revision with Rosmo. Now, I already mentioned what I wanted to change, and it's this scene where the townspeople snitched on Jesper, and now he's going home and everybody's so mad at him, and instead of explaining, all Jesper could say repeatedly is, I can explain, it's not what you think. Now, I'd like to change just a few things, just a few tiny things. They can keep this big revelation cliche, but instead of them being angry, because it doesn't make sense, they could instead just make them disappointed. Others could be sad that he's leaving, and Claus could be disappointed in him having ulterior ulterior having motives. I don't know how to say that word. All the while, Jesper could just start explaining himself and say something like, that was the goal at first, but now I genuinely love this town. And then Alva or Claus, who is hurt that he's about to leave, could hit him with this, then stay. But since his father is already walking away and he can't make a split decision instantly because he's indecisive, he couldn't answer and that's when they walk away. Look, if this is what happened, I don't think I could blame Jesper either. His rich life was so cozy. Even I would be indecisive in that scenario. Or maybe instead of being silent and indecisive, he says, I need to think about it, which Alva just gives a disappointed, hurt look and walks away. And Claus could say, have a safe trip, all saddened, but not angered. Because my gosh, they are adults. In the original, they seem like children who got angry easily. I'm sure they understood it if Jesper needed to leave or did what he did because he had ulterior motives. Motives or none, it doesn't erase the fact that he changed the town for the better. You know what I mean? Anyway, if you guys have other opinions on that, do share in the comments because we do have different perspectives in this. Anyway, that's what I wanted to change in Claus. It's just that one thing. Now, do I want to recommend this movie? I'm not really sure. Yeah, it's a good movie and it would be a great watch with kids, but alone? Not my cup of tea, tea. I didn't really enjoy much watching alone. It's still a good movie nonetheless though, don't get me wrong, it's great. If we have the same opinions or different ones, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your opinions and remember, let's all be polite because I'm watching you guys. So yeah, thanks so much for all my patrons. You are the reason I can still keep going. I can still keep doing this. Shoutouts to my patrons in the Butternut tier, Amanda Rona Idenge, Kyle Chua, and Christian V. If you want to recommend a movie, comment down below, and if you definitely want me to do a review on it, consider being a patron in the Butternut tier as well, because they decide what I get to review next, and I have no questions, I just have to obey, okay? 